write the subheading as cooperativity. Yesterday we have discussed few details about cooperativity. Write a point. The process of cooperativity the process of cooperativity can be understood the process of cooperativity can be understood from from oxygen adsorption isotherm from oxygen adsorption isotherm You can note this. oxygen adsorption isotherm on one axis I am taking percentage saturation how much is the percentage starting from zero up till 100 percent saturation on x axis I am taking partial pressure of oxygen in tor ok so again I am taking from zero 20 40 60 80 up till 100 one parabola you take it as myoglobin MB sigmoidal curve is for hemoglobin one at pH 7.4, another at pH 7.2. Two different pH. One you may take it as 7, another as 6.8. Two different values. Just to show two different values, I have written 7.4 and 7.2. Higher and lower. What difference do you find in the oxygen adsorption isotherm of myoglobin and hemoglobin? First you draw the curves. Parabola, these are sigmoidal, S-shaped curves. For hemoglobin, sigmoidal type of curves. Now everyone just concentrate for a while. Suppose if I ask you, I want 50% saturation. Oxygen, suppose I want 50% saturation for this myoglobin or say hemoglobin. So how much pressure of, how much partial pressure of oxygen is needed to get 50% saturation for myoglobin? Just let us check, okay? I am taking myoglobin, I am comparing myoglobin with hemoglobin. What is the percentage of saturation at a given partial pressure of oxygen? Right? So for this 50, this is the point on myoglobin. How much oxygen partial pressure is needed for it? Maybe around 15 or say 16. So the partial pressure of oxygen required for a myoglobin to have 50% saturation is very less. Okay? Next, I want the same 50% saturation, I am taking hemoglobin, I want the hemoglobin to be 50% saturated with oxygen. How much partial pressure is needed for it? Nearly 40. Okay, first I will draw this, then you try to understand. I want 50% saturation 
for the same hemoglobin when the pH is low. So whenever pH drops for that same hemoglobin to get saturated to up to 50%, how much partial pressure of oxygen is needed? Above 60. It is above 60. Okay, what is the meaning of it? First you just draw a line, then touch it to the touch it to the partial pressure of oxygen at different positions. What is the meaning of it? I'll explain. If you can understand this, one adsorption isotherm, altogether four characters you can understand. Just from one, four characters will come. So let us just understand about this concept. Myoglobin has how many binding sites? One binding site. We did not discuss about myoglobin, but simply myoglobin is a monomer. In one of the classes I told you it is a monomer, single unit is present. Iron surrounded by porphyrin, iron attached to histidine. Okay? So that is a single unit. That single unit can take up one dioxygen at a time. Therefore, I can say that percentage saturation is 100%. It is perfectly 100%. But if I choose hemoglobin, altogether there are four binding sites. All the four binding sites, if they are occupied at a time, then the saturation will be again 100%. But whatever may be the condition, it is not reaching 100%. Hemoglobin will never reach 100% saturation. Suppose if three units are having dioxygen, maybe for fourth unit if dioxygen is binding, from the remaining three, one might unbind. So the average is only 2.8. I will never get 100% saturation for hemoglobin. First point to remember. Second, suppose if the myoglobin is saturated up to 50%. Just imagine I'm having 10 myoglobins. For understanding purpose, I'm having 10 myoglobins, out of which 5 myoglobins have to get saturated. Okay, 5 myoglobins are taking 5 dioxygens. How much partial pressure is needed for it? how much partial pressure of oxygen is needed, just maybe around 20, lesser than 20. So even if the partial pressure of oxygen is very low, myoglobin is getting 50% saturation at a low partial pressure. Okay? Next. For that same 50% saturation for hemoglobin, how much partial pressure is needed? It is almost doubled. It means hemoglobin cannot work at a low partial pressure. It has to have higher partial pressure. Only then it will reach a proper saturation. Okay? Suppose if the partial pressure is very low. Imagine I am taking at the same partial pressure. Okay? How much saturation of hemoglobin will be there? How much saturation will be there for hemoglobin? Suppose if this is the same line. This is hemoglobin. Can you see? Not even 10. It means at that low partial pressure, how much hemoglobin is getting saturated with oxygen? not even 10 percent. It means for hemoglobin to take up dioxygen, you always need more partial pressure. That is the reason at lungs, hemoglobin will be taking up dioxygen where the partial pressure of oxygen is very high. Okay? Next. To reach 50 percent saturation for hemoglobin at 7.4 pH, how much partial pressure is needed? Nearly 40. But suppose my pH has dropped. Maybe I have taken acidic diet or maybe something has happening in my body slowly my blood is becoming acidic. Okay? Inside environment is becoming acidic. From 7.4, now the atmosphere is 7.2. Just a point to drop of pH. Now let us look. In that point to drop, how much percentage saturation is dropping? For same 50% saturation, partial pressure required is more. It means at lower pH, if I want that same hemoglobin to saturate, I have to supply more oxygen. Okay? Or, just let us take this same line. If I want to get saturated up till this level, I am having partial pressure of only 40, not more than that. So at a pH of 7.2, how much is saturation? Just about 
what is the meaning of it meaning is whenever ph drops hemoglobin loses its oxygen binding capability that is the meaning that you are getting from this oxygen adsorption isotherm okay so for common point what i have told you is for 50% saturation compare myoglobin and hemoglobin for 50% saturation myoglobin needs less partial pressure hemoglobin needs more partial pressure at higher ph still more partial pressure at lower ph so as ph decreases you have to increase partial pressure of oxygen to maintain the same saturation okay or if the partial pressure of oxygen is same when ph drops hemoglobin loses its oxygen binding capability percentage saturation will drop proper respiration will also does not occur and that person will become ill that is the meaning of it okay so what is the final conclusive point higher ph higher saturation lower ph lower saturation that is the conclusive point write down remember the conclusive point that is more important for your examination point of view after all this understanding that is the point to conclude at higher ph at higher ph percentage saturation percentage saturation is more percentage saturation is more whereas as ph drops whereas whereas when ph drops you put when whereas when ph drops percentage saturation also drops when ph drops percentage saturation also drops for the same partial pressure percentage saturation also drops for the same partial pressure for the same partial pressure partial pressure of oxygen for the same partial pressure of oxygen okay now suppose from this curve i'm just asking you a question i'm having partial pressure of oxygen at 40 value it is 40 fixed okay let us fix one one is constant the other will be a variable then if this is a constant which one will be the variable percentage saturation will become the variable so let me fix it at 40 my percentage saturation is only 40 pressure greater than that it is not going how much i inhale it is not moving okay so at this saturation at this partial pressure how much myoglobin is saturated at this partial pressure how much myoglobin is saturated 100% even at 40 myoglobin is saturated 100% let us see hemoglobin at a higher ph 40 hemoglobin at a higher ph hemoglobin is just saturated only 50% half of myoglobin now let me drop ph to 7.2 how much is saturated just a 10 it means at that same partial pressure of oxygen if ph is dropping hemoglobin is losing its oxygen binding capability this is one reason we have to maintain our metabolic activities and ph of blood at a normal levels okay so diet is very very important for this now in a similar way just as i have given you for ph i'll also give you oxygen adsorption isotherm for carbon dioxide temperature and different hemoglobins okay you just try to understand the curves first let us take for carbon dioxide if i am taking carbon dioxide this is for ph i am taking carbon dioxide where do you get low carbon dioxide where do you get high carbon dioxide same percentage saturation on y axis partial pressure of oxygen on x axis they are same but instead of two different ph i am taking two different carbon dioxide concentrations where do you get high concentration of carbon dioxide where do you get low concentration of carbon dioxide that is for carbon dioxide next is for temperature where do you get at high temperature where do you get at low temperature
let me take about 50 everything is same partial pressure of oxygen percentage saturation all these are same where do you get high CO2 where do you get low CO2 can you write this as low CO2 Okay. I have written all the variables. Now you try to understand why one is high, why one is low. Shall we understand low and high carbon dioxide first? Suppose I want to reach 50% saturation of hemoglobin. If the carbon dioxide percentage is low, let's wait. If carbon dioxide percentage is low, partial pressure of oxygen required is also low. But if carbon dioxide percentage increases, partial pressure of oxygen should also increase or else let us make this as constant okay just let me put this as somewhere around 30 I am having partial pressure of oxygen of 30 only at 30 when carbon dioxide percentage is low 50% hemoglobin is being saturated but suppose if carbon dioxide percentage is high if carbon dioxide percentage is high maybe only 10% is getting saturated it means at higher carbon dioxide percentage hemoglobin saturation will be less okay so more carbon dioxide means less hemoglobin saturation that is not good that is not good but it is good at tissue level what will happen at tissue level last class I told you at lungs we fill in air hemoglobin will take up dioxygen at a higher partial pressure when it goes to tissue level respiration process will occur carbon dioxide is produced so more carbon dioxide is present but at more carbon dioxide what will happen to hemoglobin capability of dioxygen drops since it is dropping it will give away oxygen so it will give away oxygen at tissue level takes up carbon dioxide and again comes to lungs so this is better for hemoglobin whenever carbon dioxide percentage is high hemoglobin will lose its oxygen binding capability how much is it losing more than half it is losing its capability more than half can you understand at 30 partial pressure if this is 50 at that same partial pressure if carbon dioxide concentration is high it is not even 20 not even half so conclusion low carbon dioxide high saturation high carbon dioxide low saturation next same low temperature high saturation high temperature low saturation so if at all we get fever why do we feel so lethargic why become so dull because hemoglobin can lose its oxygen binding capability we will not be active oxygen binding capability is dropping that is the reason if you go to doctor they'll say put a tippet sponging tippet sponging means take a cloth put it in uh, warm water and then you just that is called as tippet sponging it means every time you are taking away that heat as that heat is going away slowly hemoglobin will retain its oxygen binding capability you will become active that is the meaning of tippet sponging so you have to put it on your uh, forehead, palms, feet, that is the meaning, okay? Next, fetal hemoglobin and mother hemoglobin, which has got a greater capability? Fetal. The reason, I told you, because 2-3 PPG binding is weaker. So for that reason, if I want 50% saturation, fetal hemoglobin requires less par partial pressure of oxygen, whereas mother hemoglobin for that same partial pressure saturation is less okay 
So fetal hemoglobin has got a higher affinity for dioxygen. Even if little dioxygen is present, immediately it will try to get, grab from the mother. That is good for fetus because the respiratory system is not fully developed in the fetus. It has higher affinity than the mother hemoglobin and therefore it can easily take up dioxygen. And even if you look at the protein, protein is also different in hemoglobin. Whatever hemoglobin that the fetus has, that hemoglobin is different from the mother. Okay? Once the baby is born, slowly there will be changes in the blood. Within the six months, slowly the blood will change, the hemoglobin will change. So you no more call it as a fetal hemoglobin. You call it as HbA, meaning adult hemoglobin. That becomes adult hemoglobin, the chain will change. Okay? So in our customary traditions, you might have heard, once a baby is born, your grandfather, grandmother will tell you just wait for a few months, their color will change because blood will change so color will also change all these are linked up concepts you can draw these four <coughs> fetal hemoglobin will have a different uh, constituents when you compare it with adult hemoglobin once the pe uh, fetus is born i mean baby is born it will change slowly write the conclusive points for each graph Higher pH, all these are for hemoglobin, okay? Myoglobin, just for comparison I have drawn. Conclusive points are for hemoglobin. Higher pH, higher saturation. Higher pH, higher saturation. Next. Lower CO2, lower CO2, higher saturation. Lower CO2, higher saturation. Next. Lower temperature, lower temperature, higher saturation. Lower temperature, higher saturation. Next. Fetal hemoglobin, fetal hemoglobin has fetal hemoglobin has higher saturation higher saturation than THIN than mother hemoglobin than mother hemoglobin okay final conclusion in a single diagram suppose this is my ideal hemoglobin graph sigmoidal curve if I decrease Temperature, where do the curve go? Up or down? Up. So I am just putting a dotted line. This dotted line represents low temperature. Okay? Suppose if it, this is my ideal curve, I am decreasing temperature, where do the curve go? Up. If I increase temperature, down. It means high temperature below. Low temperature, above the ideal curve low CO2 above high CO2 below high pH low pH and fetal hemoglobin above mother hemoglobin below a conclusive curve for all the four if this is my ideal curve, if I decrease temperature, curve will go above. If I increase temperature, it will come below. So altogether, one, two, three, four factors in a single curve.
completed small subheading cooperative is done role of globin chain role of globin chain write a point globin chain globin chain is a protein part globin chain is a protein part of hemoglobin protein part of hemoglobin it protects it protects the hemoglobin it protects the hemoglobin from coagulation it protects the hemoglobin from coagulation coagulation means it is just converting into hematin where it is like precipitating completely it is not losing reversibility losing reversibility so it is protecting hemoglobin from coagulation or or protecting hemoglobin protecting hemoglobin by not converting into protecting hemoglobin by not converting into hematin protecting hemoglobin by not converting into hematin these reactions are important question appears from these reactions you can note down these reactions i'll explain first one it is a hemoglobin superoxo complex second one is hemoglobin peroxo complex third one we call it as a ferrile complex the last one is called as hematin many times question has appeared from this hematin look at the first reaction first reaction this is an iron 2 coming from one subunit of a hemoglobin altogether there are four subunits so if i am taking just one of the irons that one iron is combining with dioxygen it is converting into superoxo complex 
I told iron will be converting into plus 3 low spin state. So this is iron 2 high spin combining with dioxygen. This one is high spin. We can understand. Combining with dioxygen it is forming a superoxo complex where iron is low spin. That superoxo complex is interacting with another iron of second subunit. There are four subunits. Yesterday in the last class I have drawn the diagram also. In the diagram one iron should not combine with another iron. If at all it combines what will happen? This thing will happen. So one iron should not combine with another iron. That globin chain will mask it. It will act as a bridge so that the two irons do not come in contact. If at all they come in contact, this thing will happen. Iron superoxo will combine with the second subunit iron that will form peroxo complex. That peroxo complex will undergo cleavage to give you ferrile. What is the oxidation state of iron in ferrile complex? It is plus 4. It is a rare oxidation state. Plus 4 is a rare oxidation state. Next. Such a ferrile complex is combining with another iron. It can interact with another subunit. Where it is giving you? Hematin. Right. What are the other names for hematin? Hemoglobin, not hemo. Hemoglobin is different. Hemoglobin is different. Hemoglobin means hematin. Another name is met hemoglobin. So previous exam questions, the question was, what is the oxidation state of iron in met hemoglobin? It is plus 3. Iron is present in plus 3. Next, oxygen. Oxygen is it dioxo, superoxo, peroxo or oxo? Oxygen is it dioxo, superoxo, peroxo or oxo? Oxo. One oxygen simply call it as a oxo bridge. So this is oxo form. Okay, so many questions can appear from this. Superoxo complex, peroxo complex, ferrile complex, hematin or hemoglobin or methemoglobin where the oxidation state of iron is 3 and this iron will lose reversible oxygen binding. There is no reversibility. Once you get hematin, oxygen is locked. Two irons are now combined with one another. That hemoglobin is waste. It cannot work. When does it work? When you have an enzyme called as diaphorase or met hemoglobin reductase, this will go back to this. Every time diaphorase enzyme, whenever you, in our body, 3% of hemoglobin always converts into hematin. But this is back converted by diaphorase. That is a continuous process in us. But in blue frigates, once this is formed, again this will not be formed. Diaphorase enzyme is absent. So this is formed. Hemoglobin will lose oxygen binding capacity. This is permanent bonding. The person will die. Okay? But globin chain is protecting us. Whatever protein that I have shown, that is protecting us. Finish this for. Okay, write down a point. One of the one of the subunits, one of the subunits of hemoglobin, one of the subunits of hemoglobin combined with O2, combined with O2 to give superoxo complex. to give superoxo complex which is later converted to which is later converted to peroxo peroxo complex and then ferrile complex and then ferrile complex next finally ferrile complex finally ferrile complex combined with another iron combined with another iron to give 
to give hematin hematin next such a hematin such a hematin loses its l o s e s such a hematin loses its oxygen binding capability reversible oxygen binding capability such a hematin loses its reversible oxygen binding capability reversible oxygen binding capability next hematin is converted back to hemoglobin hematin is converted back to hemoglobin by hematin is converted back to hemoglobin by diaphoresis diaphoresis or met hemoglobin reductase diaphoresis or met hemoglobin reductase met hemoglobin reductase okay write a small question what is bore effect what is bohr effect what is ph effect most of you are from life science background but where did this bohr come from from andhra university this is not niels bohr father of niels bohr christian bohr this is not chemistry bohr biology bohr on his name bohr effect has been given and what is this bohr effect his father of niels bohr it is called as a ph effect what is this ph effect hemoglobin at a higher ph can retain oxygen but whenever it goes at a lower ph it loses its oxygen binding capability so that effect is called as ph effect this was discovered by bohr therefore this is called as bohr effect not niels bohr christian bohr his name is christian bohr okay so just write down that point both are same bohr effect or ph effect is one and the same at lower ph at lower ph hemoglobin loses at lower ph hemoglobin loses its oxygen binding capability its oxygen binding capability this effect was discovered by this effect was discovered by christian bohr this effect was discovered by christian bohr in bracket father of niels bohr father of niels bohr father of niels bohr okay so having explained that ph effect you just look at this reaction what do you understand from this reaction imagine that hemoglobin is fully saturated just imagine that four oxygens are there in hemoglobin it is going to the tissue or cellular level where carbon dioxide is available but carbon dioxide whenever it is formed in the respiration it will not stay as carbon dioxide immediately carbonic anhydrase enzyme will convert into carbonic acid that reaction is very fast so carbon dioxide mixes with water to give you carbonic acid the two protons will come and join with the hemoglobin at various portions of hemoglobin two protons will be binding that is called as protonation of hemoglobin 
So what type of conformational changes appear is whenever hemoglobin goes to tissue level, carbon dioxide is present, that is dissolved in water, forming carbonic acid. That carbonic acid is a weak acid, it will release protons. Those protons will come and bind at various amino acid sites of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has a protein, protein has amino acid, amino acid has acid and amine group. So there will be a plus charge, there will be like a minus charge. Okay, both charges are existing. So protons will come and bind at various sites of amino acids. Once the protons come and bind, there will be a conformational change in hemoglobin. This conformational change makes it to lose oxygen. Once there is a change conformationally, hemoglobin will give away dioxygen. So it takes up protons, give away dioxygen. It is taking up protons, it is also taking up HCO3 minus. I told you amino acids will have various charges. So plus can come and bind, minus can also come and bind. And once these charges are bound, that hemoglobin will come to the lungs where the carbonic acid is back converted to carbon dioxide, it is exhaled. Maybe from 100% CO2, nearly 90% is coming out as carbonic acid. The remaining 10% of CO2, it will directly bind with hemoglobin. It will directly bind to hemoglobin and it will come to the lungs. This complex of carbon dioxide and hemoglobin, we call it as carb hemoglobin or carbohemoglobin or carb amino hemoglobin ok so there is a new terminology suppose suddenly a question appears what is carb hemoglobin the answer is whatever carbon dioxide that is coming out due to the respiration process out of 100% nearly 90% is converted into carbonic acid out of that carbonic acid proton and HCO3- minus will attach to various sites of hemoglobin. Once proton comes and attaches, conformational changes come, hemoglobin loses its oxygen binding capability, it is releasing oxygen. So carbon dioxide is being attached to hemoglobin in the form of carbonic acid, it is nearly 90%. The remaining 10% of carbon dioxide directly attaches to hemoglobin. It is directly attaching to hemoglobin. That complex we are calling it as carb hemoglobin or carbohemoglobin or carb amino hemoglobin don't get confused with carboxy hemoglobin this is a different complex carboxy is hemoglobin attached to carbonyl CO that is called a CO poisoning that is carboxy this is carb amino or carbo or carb so there is a difference okay write down this reaction just I'll give you a few points Carboxy is different from carbamino. <coughs> next test you prepare reaction mechanism. Get ready with reaction mechanism next week. Reaction mechanism will be the topic for your test. This will take some time, hemoglobin. Once hemoglobin is completed, hemerythrin and hemocyanin, they are very short topics. So both of them will be completed in within two to three hours. That is a very small topic. But hemoglobin is a lengthier topic. Completed? Write a point. At tissue level, at tissue level, carbon dioxide is converted into at tissue level, carbon dioxide is converted into carbonic acid, carbonic acid that attach, that attach to the hemoglobin, that attach to the hemoglobin at various binding sites, that attach to the hemoglobin at various binding sites. Next, this brings, this brings conformational changes, 
this brings conformational changes in hemoglobin this brings conformational changes in hemoglobin where where hb hemoglobin loses loses its oxygen binding capability where hemoglobin loses its oxygen binding capability next nearly 10% of co2 nearly 10% of co2 directly directly attached to hemoglobin nearly 10% of co2 directly attach to hemoglobin to form a complex called as to form a complex called as write down carb hemoglobin carb hemoglobin or carbo hemoglobin or carb amino hemoglobin carb carbo carb amino so many new terminology is being introduced carb carbo carb amino hemoglobin hematin met hemoglobin reductase diaphorase finished okay write the last question timing up to 7:30 what is sevo poisoning what is what is sevo poisoning what is sevo poisoning what is it can anyone explain suppose if there is more carbon monoxide what will happen you might be going in some buses sometime you become faint one reason is sulfur dioxide or carbon monoxide this is also one of the reasons carbon monoxide binding with iron is very very strong because carbon monoxide is a carbon monoxide is nothing but as a ligand you call it as carbonyl so it is a very very strong pi acid since it is a very strong pi acid iron is a transition metal the bonding between iron and carbonyl will be very strong it is almost irreversible binding between iron dioxygen is reversible but binding between iron carbonyl is almost irreversible almost if at all i give more amount of oxygen then it will be reversible but if the oxygen partial pressure is less then immediately iron will bind to carbonyl so if at all i give carbonyl and oxygen iron will take up which one first carbonyl what is the affinity for iron to attach to carbonyl how many times could it be greater suppose i am taking iron i am giving you oxygen i am giving co to iron how many times iron affinity is greater than oxygen with comparison to co maybe two times three times how many 300 times okay 300 is a very big number not even 300 it is about 10000 times but this iron is a naked iron or bare iron bare iron means not uh, iron coming from hemoglobin simple iron if i just take simple iron and if at all i check the affinity of that iron towards oxygen and carbonyl iron affinity towards carbonyl is 10000 times greater than its affinity towards dioxygen it is outside but if i go to hemoglobin within the hemoglobin hemoglobin iron affinity for oxygen to carbonyl is 1 is to 250 it means its affinity is greater towards carbonyl by 250 times nearly 300 what she said it is 250 times it is still higher than oxygen but here it is 10000 outside same iron in hemoglobin suddenly it is dropping to 250 what could be the reason affinity to co is greater understood but it is 250 times greater in hemoglobin if it is a simple iron outside it is 10000 times greater what could be the difference 
any difference? Difference is this. Suppose if this is iron, this is your porphyrin, this is proximal histidine. Where is distal histidine? Distal histidine is somewhere here. Okay? NH. So whenever dioxygen comes and binds, this hydrogen is forming a sorry, this hydrogen is forming a hydrogen bond. Because this is a bent mode. This is a bent mode. But whenever carbonyl comes and binds, the bonding between iron and that carbonyl is found to be linear. It is not bent. In olden literature, in olden books, you see it is shown as bent. It is not correct. The new literature says bonding between iron and carbonyl is almost linear. So from 180 degree, plus or minus 7 degree will vary. Little change only. Now here I am having a distal histidine. Carbonyl is trying to be linear. Do you find any steric repulsions or not? Yes or no? Here it is very close. Oxygen is bent, so no problem. But here oxygen, carbonyl is not bent, it is linear. But here I am having a histidine. Do you find steric repulsions? Yes. So due to that steric hindrance, the affinity for iron towards carbonyl decreases. If it is a simple iron, 10,000 times higher. If it is a iron coming from hemoglobin, affinity is dropping because this bonding is not stable. There is some steric repulsion from distal histidine. Therefore, affinity is dropping. But still, it is higher than dioxygen. Okay? So what is the point that you have to remember? The affinity of hemoglobin iron towards carbonyl is 250 times greater than dioxygen. First point. Second point. The bonding between iron and carbonyl, the bonding mode is linear. It is linear. Not bent. It is linear. There is a steric repulsion between distal histidine and the carbonyl. There is no hydrogen bonding. Okay? Write down these points. So what do you mean by CO poisoning? The affinity of iron is greater than the affinity of iron towards carbonyl is greater than oxygen. So even at a very low partial pressure of carbon monoxide, iron will immediately bind to CO. That CO will be going into the brain. No oxygen. So immediately the person will faint. That is called as CO poisoning. So for that person, you should not go and uh, become a crowd. Just give some space give some air, more amount of partial pressure, then slowly it will be reversed. Okay? Write down the point. CO is a pi acid. CO, CO is a pi acid. Its affinity AFFI, not E, A. Its affinity towards bare iron Bare means naked iron, normal iron, not hemoglobin iron, simple iron. Its affinity towards bare iron or naked iron is 10,000 times greater is 10,000 times greater than O2. Its affinity for CO is 10,000 times greater than O2. Next. For hemoglobin iron, for hemoglobin iron, the affinity the affinity towards CO is 250 times is 250 times than O2 than O2. This is because of this is because of, uh, this drop is because of, this drop, drop means from 10,000 to 250. This drop is because of steric hindrance, steric hindrance from distal histidine, steric hindrance from distal histidine. Next. The bonding between iron and CO the bonding between iron and CO is nearly linear. The bonding between iron and CO is nearly linear. 
वन एटी प्लस और माइनस सेवन वन एटी प्लस और माइनस सेवन सो जस्ट फ्रॉम लीनियर इट विल डिविएट अ लिटिल प्लस और माइनस सेवन डिग्री नॉट मोर देन दैट फाइनल क्वेश्चन सपोज आई गिव यू नाइट्रोसिल कार्बोनिल डाइऑक्सीजन हुज बॉन्डिंग विल बी स्ट्रॉगर फॉर हिमोग्लोबिन आयरन हुज बॉन्डिंग विल बी स्ट्रॉगर नाइट्रोसिल एनवो सीवो ओ टू इट इज एनवो एनवो एंड सीवो आर वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग पायासिड्स बोथ आर स्ट्रॉन्ग पायासिड्स बट एनवो बॉन्डिंग इज स्ट्रॉगर वॉट इज द रीजन एनी रीजन सीवो इज लीनियर there is a steric hindrance but envo is bent no steric hindrance so steric hindrance is less stability is more okay any question appears then simply you write down hemoglobin complex with envo is more stable than hemoglobin complex with co more stable than oxygen right a point the complex of hemoglobin the complex of hemoglobin with co the complex of hemoglobin with co is called carboxy hemoglobin carboxy carboxy hemoglobin next the affinity of hemoglobin iron the affinity of hemoglobin iron towards envo the affinity of hemoglobin iron towards envo is greater is greater than that of is greater than that of co is greater than that of co you can write the order at the last HbNO greater affinity than CO greater affinity than O2 last point okay so this is all about hemoglobin myoglobin just four or five points not more than that everything else is equivalent to hemoglobin but just a few points that i'll give in the next class then we'll continue with the other oxygen binding pigments if you want you can draw this simply nitrosyl you put it bent okay put nitrosyl as bent 